Alright, so for those of you just tuning in, we're about to spectate a 3v3 on the map Arabia, in which my viewers will be playing against the brand new Age of Empires 2 HD Edition AI. Now, so for those of you who are not aware, the Age of Empires 2 HD Edition on Steam comes with a new AI that is significantly smarter and more advanced than the classic CD version AI, the Conqueror's AI that we all grew up with and are used to. Thank you so much, German Not German, for the sub. Really appreciate it. Now, of course, this AI was released in an update that did come out a little while ago, but I never really got a chance to show it off. So it's new relative to the old CD AI. In this uh, specific video, I would like to showcase some of the differences between the new AI compared to the Conqueror's AI, and just kind of show off exactly how far we've come in terms of AI. Uh, I recently did a series um, where I casted some games with Promi on Voobly to for the Masters of AI tournament. If you want to see some of the user patch AIs, the AIs in HD are certainly not as advanced, but it is a step up. Before we begin, a couple quick things is that... Some, okay, there we go. Let me ready up. Woo, thank God. Uh, you can find links to everything you need in the video description below, uh, including a link to my custom AI resonance bot on the Steam Workshop. You just head to that page, click subscribe if you would like to try another awesome AI opponent. Uh, so you can find Resonance Bot on the Steam Workshop. Another thing is you can find my live stream schedule by going to my Twitch page and then scrolling underneath the video player there. So make sure you keep your eyes peeled on that. In general, I stream every Saturday. And if you follow me on Facebook and Twitter, I also post an update. It occurs to me that even though I have a rather significant following on Twitch and YouTube, I actually don't have that many followers on uh, Twitter and Facebook. So if you guys could give those a look, I would appreciate it. Now, actually, onto the game itself, uh, a couple quick things is that uh, I had you guys vote in the Twitch chat on what civs we were going to make everybody. So, Promi, the AI's creator, has decided that he would like one of the AIs to play as the Huns. Everyone in the Twitch chat voted for the Japanese, assume, presumably because we're all Spirit of the Law fans here. And then I, my personal community choice, went for the Ethiopians because even though I don't think the Shoto Warrior is OP, I do think that unit is absolutely hilarious and really fun to see in action. So, I would love to see... So show tell warriors from the AI. Welcome to the stream, Miss Aimbot. Thank you, Hutchkiz, for the 18-month resub. Good to see ya. And yes, without further ado, onto the game itself. I'll start by introducing the players. So we have Happy Hippie playing as the Yellow Mayans, and then in the pocket position for Team Humans, we have McKay playing as the Blue Spanish, and at the top flank, we have Wee Martinez playing as the Green Huns. It's worth noting that these guys are all playing classic civilizations, so the Spanish Huns and Mayans, whereas the Ethiopians are really the only new civ in the game. Uh, so yeah, I'm just looking forward to seeing all this in action. There are a couple rules that we did put in place, though, is that, uh, one, you're not allowed to use your scout cavalry to pull the AI's villagers, so, you know, this would mean that you sent your scout to the AI's base in the early game, you hit one of their villagers, and then you just, like, slowly back it up to create a Congo line. That is kind of like a severe exploit and really takes all the challenge out of it, so we don't allow that in this specific match. No drushing, so this means like no Dark Age Militia, because it's kind of the same thing about using your scouts to pull the villagers, because they kind of chase infinitely. Uh, and then the other rule was no tower rushes. So a you know this would mean that you know, prior to 15 minutes you would send your you would send a bunch of villagers to your opponent's base and start putting down watchtowers. Those things are all like crippling AI exploits. And, you know, a lot of the time, people will abuse those to do their, like, 1v7 hardest challenge. But really, like, even though there are so many exploits and, like, crippling bugs in Age of Empires 2 HD Edition, um, the AI is actually very smart and advanced and does some crazy things that you don't really get to see if you abuse that. And I think that it's also really difficult to learn anything if you're abusing that. So, in this specific match, we will not be allowing those type of cheese tactics. It can be a, a straight game. Now, of course, you can certainly rush the AI, of which I certainly encourage players to do. Uh, there we go, he's luring the elephant, not bad. By the way, this version of Arabia is exactly the same as regular Arabia, except um, there are elephants and whatnot, like it's got the new animals and the new trees, but it's functionally exactly the same. <laughs> Thank you, Meister Proper. If you guys have any questions about the AI in general, or just Age of Empires 2, I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, I'm at this point where... You know, right now, I again, thank you so much for the continued support. Like, I've been working two part-time jobs recently uh, in order to pay the rent, because I do live on my own now, so yeah, just trying to trying to get by. Uh, and in the meantime, while I'm doing that, I'm also trying to just branch out on YouTube. So, uh, you know, in addition to Age of Empires 2, Hearthstone, whatever, I'm just going to be doing a wide variety of content. So, you know, if Hearthstone's not for you, 
Fear not my fr- Whoa, I think the thing is just moonwalking for a minute. Oh my god. <laughs> anyway, fear not my friends. I will be doing some other stuff uh, as well. Just I would like to just kind of branch out and do do a wide variety of content. Meanwhile, it looks like Wee Martina is coming in here for a sick ostrich lure. Not bad, not bad. And everybody just off to a, a pretty nice start. Right, so, Nomad Right Handed asks, why are most of your YouTube videos 720p? That's actually a very good question. Uh, it's because I live in America, where we have freedom from good internet. And, you know, when I lived at my parents' house, my internet connection was, like, very stable, but not that fast. And now that I, I live on my own, I have faster internet that's less stable. <laughs> not sure what the second is going to be. Um, yeah, I mean, the... Yeah, trushing, it can be good trushing practice, but the AI is just, it, there's so many limitations to it, and I encourage you if you play against Resonance Bot to also not abuse those things, that um, the AI just can't actually put up with it by design. Now, I am just so congested due to my allergies, my goodness. Oof. Man, yeah, I think the AI is just really fun, and one of the things I enjoy doing in Age of Empires 2 is just playing versus the, the new AI or the Resonance Bot AI as just a way to show my friends the game, because if you just throw them right into some, like, online lobby. That can be really intimidating, and it can be difficult uh, for them to learn. So I think the AI is an excellent uh, practice tool. And compared to the Conqueror's AI, the, the default AI here uses a wide variety of actually, like, human-like strategies, so you can actually learn something from it. Um, it's really interesting. Like, I remember when I was trying to become the best Age of Empires 2 player in the world. So this is when I was a little kid. I wanted to be the Ash Ketchum of Age of Empires 2. I would, you know, watch the Conqueror as I play and try and learn from it, and that really warped my understanding of the game, whereas with the new default AI and, and Resonance Spot, there's a lot that you can learn from it. Uh, of course, as well as uh, Brute Force is also a very good custom AI in the Steam Workshop. Um, you know, the the old Conqueror's AI would do things such as, like, sell its stone uh, to at the market in the Feudal Age to get enough gold to advance the Castle Age really quickly, uh, which I would not recommend if you're a human most of the time. Mr. Mage says... Uh, how does your AI automatically adjust difficulty? Oh, it, it tracks all sorts of statistics. Again, not for malicious purposes. It you know, it will track to see how much like town center idle time you've been having, uh, whether or not you're like making military units, uh, whether or not you appear to be doing some sort of strategy that fits the map. Um, it will check all sorts of statistics live. My AI resonance bot will do that, uh, and then adjust the difficulty to meet your needs. And this is because, again, you know, five difficulty levels doesn't really cover it, so I wanted to make sure that Regardless of your skill level, that Resonance Spot could always give you a good game. Um, indeed. <laughs> uh, Armgan says, this game is going to answer my last question. How are new AIs against human good players? Oh, do you mean, like, why is this good practice? Well, it's more just like it's, it's sort of low stress. Is this, a, is this a crocodile lure? Oh, no. What the hell? I've never seen this before. No, because this is, that, that was the assistant hunter that the AI sent with the... Oh, see? See how he catches the elephant before it resets? Well played, friend. The boar luring logic does need to be improved, though. Uh, and that's something that uh, I've asked the devs about, and hopefully they will be able to, to fix it in the future, is like to move the boar you know, underneath the town center. But yeah, it's pretty cool. The old Conqueror's AI could not lure boars at all, so it's nice to see them uh, be able to do that in this game. Uh, some other things that, like, really confused me about the, the Conqueror's AI when I was a kid is that you play against... Okay. Eventually, even though the, the gap between standard and moderate difficulty was really hard, and I'd love to hear your guys' AI stories, so please tell me in the, in the comments below. I have many fond memories of playing versus the Conqueror's AI. Uh, you know, I eventually I finally got good enough that I could beat it on, you know, moderate fairly easily and hard, so I went to the next level hardest, and I figured... And I told myself, okay, if I can beat on Hardest, I'm probably ready for online play. And then I saw it get to the Feudal Age at 4 minutes in, and then the Castle Age at 9 minutes in, and I was like, oh man, I've got a lot to learn. I, I can only get to the Castle Age by like 17 minutes. <laughs> you know, I've never had a Feudal Age faster than like 10 minutes, how can I get there in 4? So I spent so much time practicing that, and then I realized that the old Conquerors actually cheats like crazy. So, it's ridiculous. One of the nice things about the, the new HD AI in... Something that a lot of players have difficulty wrapping their heads around is that it does not cheat. That is right. The con so the Conqueror's AI cheats like crazy, but the new uh, default HD AI does not actually cheat for resources at all on any difficulty. You can toggle the cheats on, but you have to do that yourself. Um, is 250 for that? I'm not entirely sure. Promi can tell us. But, like, 
it does not cheat on, on hardest either, whereas the, the old Conqueror's AI, I believe, cheated on both hard and hardest, or at least just hardest, and on hardest it was, like, obscene. Was, yeah, he's, he's, he's in your base, you yeah. know, nine-minute castle age, whoa! And yet it would just waste all those resources doing all sorts of ridiculous weird things. So yeah, this new AI doesn't cheat as, as well, which makes it uh, good practice. Um, which is nice. Uh, you may find, though, that it's not challenging enough on the on the higher difficulties because of that, but it's still a really good resource to just learn the game. And I find that AI games are just a nice, low-stress way to just introduce your friends to Age of Empires 2 and just not really have to worry about stuff. You don't need to worry so much about balancing the team because you know that the AIs are just very consistent. You select the difficulty, you know what you're going to get. Ah, thank you so much, Admiral Vortex, for the seven-month resub. Yeah, it's a long time no see. Love you too, Promi. <laughs> Yeah, I love it that the AI does not cheat, and yet it's so much better than the Conqueror's AI. Uh, the Conqueror's AI is just so cute, you know, I would see it do things like the, you know, Teutons, Cavalry Archer Rush, or Vikings Cavalry Archer Rush, which I, I would not recommend, your, your results may vary. Um, but, you know, still, though, it was, it was actually fairly advanced for the time, uh, despite, yeah, because really, like, the devs, the original devs didn't have all the resources at their disposal to actually make a really uh, competitive AI that we have here with the... Uh, the new one. Uh, they just didn't know what the metagame would really be like, so they kind of had to guess. I think they were, you know, the original devs were, like, overestimating the relevance of cavalry archers in the, in the context of the metagame. Uh, oh my goodness, this scout rush is absolutely devastating. They've come in here, the treaty is over. Gui Martinez is in to Lali Bella's economy. Absolutely wrecking him. It looks like Lali Bella is going for fast castle age into knights, which is a very powerful strategy for the Ethiopians, since they gain 100 food and 100 gold whenever they advance the ages. Right now, Everyone's sweating. Will the AI be able to hold the line? He's going to pull all of his villagers off, uh, but unfortunately this is going to cause a lot of a lot of idle time. This is a huge exploit in Age of Empires 2 HD Edition, where the uh, the villagers just like keep chasing until the units are like 5 billion light years away. Um, that's something that they certainly need to fix, as this is, it causes a lot of idle time. Yeah, I figured I would just do this to mix this up. No, I'm not going to be doing nothing but, like, AI showcase games. I'm not going to be no doing nothing but Hearthstone or whatnot, so don't worry about that. I'm just trying to mix things up. I don't know what the second game tonight will be. Um, we'll see. I, I will I will upload this, yeah. Uh, trusting the AI is just, like, a huge exploit in which the AI, like, absolutely can't do anything to defend against it, and it just kind of takes out all the, uh, all the challenge out of it. So right now the AIs are, like, significantly far behind. I think part of this is because AIs don't scout very well in HD. Um, I find that, like, their units just freeze a lot kind of randomly. Uh, it looks like... Is Promi's AI, did he make a spearman for scouting purposes or to deal with these scouts? Well, either way, it is a pikeman now, and he's queuing up the knights. However, Promi's economy has been messed up quite significantly as he did lose all of his gold miners and his lumberjacks were pulled off the line, so he's going to need to retask them, and you see he is doing that right now. The AI does an excellent job managing his economy. Will he mix in a pikeman, or is he just going to continue with the knights? Now, good news is he does have plus one defense on the knights, which is great, and the knights themselves are so good against these scouts that Lolly Bella will be able to zone off green, so Gray doing an excellent job Holding the line. Meanwhile, on the bottom side of the map, we've got Ulden the Hun. I love the role player names. It's cute. He is also getting raided really heavily. <laughs> and it looks like he's also going for knights. The AI is extremely weak versus tower rushes. They can't even fight back at all. It's not even close. Hmm. I was hoping this game would be a little bit more close, but we'll see. No plus one on these knights, because unfortunately our purple Hun AI does not have enough resources. There are actually so many Mayan archers here from our yellow player that perhaps, you know, one knight's not going to be enough. Where is this knight going? Looks like he's going onto those archers, but no, he wants these archers. As a result, <laughs> AI just getting pummeled. Going for a fast castleage uh, on the flank can be a little bit risky. But again, the AI does select some of these strategies semi-randomized, so you get a little bit of a different game each and every time. It looks like our teal AI player is going for... Now, this is, this is something I like a little bit more. This is more of a resonance style of play. He's going for, like, a fast castle age style thing. He's got some defensive archers, putting down a defensive town center. I like this. Um, another one of the... There's so many things that the, the new AI does better than the, the Conqueror's AI. Like, it, it has, like, a much smaller town size. You may have noticed that, like, the Conqueror's AI will just build, like, a market off in the middle of nowhere, and, like, his original Blacksville, like, 5 billion years away. And then, like, years away, and then that makes it extremely exploitable, whereas... 
Yeah, the teal Japanese AI, is, he's put down his town center foundation very close to his original one, so it makes it harder to harass. Uh, in addition to that, he's put four villagers in the town center foundation to actually build it faster, which is something I like to see. Uh, monastery coming down, crossman upgrade, fletching, so this is just a really cool build from the, the teal player. Meanwhile, it looks like the the gray Ethiopians is on to two stables right about now. The, the purple hunt AI is getting absolutely positively wrecked. I think that the spearman was a replacement for the scout, not entirely sure. This is the AI on hardest. Um, oh my goodness. This might be a short game, but still hopefully fun to entertain you regardless. <laughs> I wasn't sure if I like over or underestimated the teams here, but it looks like the purple AI is down for the count. Can the other two bots claim some lives? Because right now Happy Hippie is just dominating this guy in the feudal age with nothing but archers. Purple just running out of villagers. Unfortunately, no real way to defend himself. Uh, he cannot afford knights. Uh, this guy's actually already completely dead, so... I do think, though, that this is good practice for an Archer Rush if you wanted to, to do it, is to practice Archer Rush versus the AI, because they are capable of defending against it. I think it's just some bad luck here, because, like, normally I find that the the uh, the new AI is actually fairly liberal with its Feudal Age rushes, um, where it just loves to just sit in the Feudal Age and make tons of defensive skirmishers and archers. Uh, we, we see that do it all the time, you know, it won't get to the castle age until about 26 minutes in, because it's just doing as much of a defensive flush as humanly possible. So, uh, here though, we're, we're not really seeing that, as the, the Hun's flank appears to have selected a fast castle age strategy, and that's... You know, we, we understand this more from the, the gray pocket player, because he's further away from the enemies, so he can afford to go for that fast castle age, and he's the Ethiopian, so it is a bit stronger. I mean, the Hun AI, like, it is a, the night rushes are very strong for the Huns, but it's just a little bit greedy to do that. Uh, considering that he was on the flank right next to an enemy. The rest distance is so short. This is not the Resonance Bot custom AI. Uh, this is just the, the default new AI. Um, but yeah, I encourage you, of course, to check it out on the Steam Workshop. Links below. But still, the thing is that, to keep in mind is that, like, since the AI, the default AI, the new one, does not cheat on hardest, that... Uh, for a more skilled player, it won't be that challenging and hardest, but it does make it significantly better practice. Perhaps I could have put in four bots. I just wasn't really sure how, I wasn't really sure how close it would be. But like purple is is dead as dead can be. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> they can only do this one v one. I've seen them go for like a huge flush though in, in team games, but I think that they're probably less likely to do that. Regardless, Happy Hippie up to the Castle Age now, just kind of spamming the archers. Perhaps if I do this in the future, we'll uh, we'll give them four bots or something like that. Um, but yeah, this is not not super close. But I do like the the teal AI strategy. I feel like I'll post this anyway, even though I wasn't, <laughs> even though I misjudged uh, the the difficulty slightly. I feel like I should post it anyway just to give you guys some Age of Empires content. This guy's dead, so we don't really need to look at him. Meanwhile, we've got Gray going for you know, a ridiculous amount of knights. Actually, Gray's doing. Reasonably well, despite sustaining a lot of economic damage. I believe he's still only on one town center, but he will be putting down a second one. This is another really good thing that the the new AI does, is that it really just puts a lot of emphasis on getting its economy up to up to speed. Uh, and it's much better at just managing the economy in general, just selecting like real useful strategies. Unfortunately, he's about to get 2v1 here as McKay and Happy Hippie just going to kind of clean him up. <laughs> next, time we're doing, next time we're doing four bots, if I do this again. But uh, it might be a while. <laughs> Meanwhile, it looks like Teal, though, is in the game, doing some stuff. See if he can uh, deal with Gui Martinez, our green Huns player. So the Japanese AI has some uh, Fletching Crossbowmen. He has... Oh, Cavalry Archers. Ooh. Oh, because he, he converted this Cavalry Archer. Nice. Yeah, so it looks like he's going for like more of a defensive like Monk play back to the Crossbowmen. I actually kind of like this. I think it's really cool. He's putting down a market. This is a very compact, well-built base. I like to see this. Meanwhile, unfortunately, Gray just gonna get mopped up. This is the fastest game of Age of Empires 2 I've ever seen. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> oh, absolute disaster. <laughs> I swear, though, that the new AI is actually very good. Uh, but I guess I, uh... Uh, overestimated. Uh, I didn't balance the teams very well, apparently. So, duly noted. I, I, thought, I thought that, like, 1650 to 1800 would be pretty good for the hardest AI, but... And it sort of turns out that... I guess poor luck of the draws. Purple just got bodied. Uh, he couldn't really deal with that much archer pressure because he went for that fast castle age. And I think that snowballed the game out of control. 
Uh, honestly, like the AI does such a good job booming and managing its economy that if Purple didn't just get steamrolled, then I think that this game could have been a lot closer. You know, Gray could have masked up his Ethiopian pocket knights, um, which would have been really interesting. And then, yeah, you know, Teal is a pretty cool build. Uh, what is this? Isamil. Defensive Siege Workshop, presumably for Mangonels. So Teal will be transitioning into the correct units. Gonna be mixing in a pikeman, so he's just going for like a fairly well back. Like he's just going for like a boom, and he's just defending himself, which is you know personally one of my favorite strategies. Lumber camp at the back, Gray pretty much dead. Um, Groove Metal. If you make the the default the new AI as text, then you'll see some pretty sick, some pretty sick monk rushes. Yeah, uh, in retrospect, uh, not only did I, I roll people who were, like, on the higher end of the spectrum, but, uh, I guess I just, just overestimated it. People are telling me the hardest AI is comparable to 1650. So, duly noted. Greetings, Master Chi. There will be some AI improvements, I hope, though, at some point down the line. But really, like, the thing is, is just that there are so many limitations to the actual engine that... Uh, there's not too much that Promi can do to really polish the AI specifically, besides, like, you know, maybe, uh, make it so that Standard and Moderate don't have, like, as big of a, a gap, but he really did the best he could with the, the heavy, like, limitations and bugs. Like, we saw earlier with, like, the villagers just chasing infinitely. Like, there's nothing that, that there's nothing that Promi can change in the code to prevent those types of things from being exploitable. Um, and even though the AI engine in HD is, like, so much worse than user patch, uh, he really took, like, full advantage of all the features that they that they have. Um, and we can see it, though, that, like, if the AI doesn't die early on, it's actually very scary. 30-minute <laughs> treaty for next match? Ha! We'll see. Um, I just want to see, you know, yeah, how well Teal can defend against this. I think he is doing a good job defending against this, but I'm sorry that this match wasn't exactly as close as I had in mind. But, uh... It happens. <laughs> they overdid it a bit. That's why I capped it at uh, 1800. I was looking for 1650 to 1800. I was hoping to get some like high 1600s or low 1700s here. But uh, even then, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't the closest game in the world. Deal though, showing some promising signs of life, but we'll be dying very soon. And as soon as he's about to die, we will move on to the next match. Greetings, Flash. Good to see you. And again, if you guys are interested in tuning into the live stream, you can find the schedule on my Twitch page, and I also do make a tweet on Twitter every single time, as well as a post on Facebook. Uh, so yeah, keep your eyes peeled. We're not going to be lingering this match for too much longer. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we'll do like a 3v5. I don't know, if you guys are interested, I mean, I could do I could do another one where I, uh, I give them like several uh, additional computers, or we take like lower rated dudes, but I think I'll just jump straight into it match with humans, and then I can do another AI game at a later date, uh, as I would like to show that off. Personally, I prefer more of a hu spectating humans versus AI than I do just seeing AI versus AI. Uh, you know, especially with Resonance Bot, like, I, if I wanted to make the AI, like, more competitive versus humans, then I would just make it as conservative as possible, and, like, have it, like, always go for, like, a defensive feudal age flush. Uh, I, I really, so, like, Resonance Bot is just des designed to be played against humans. I find human versus AI's match to be much more interesting than AI versus AI. Um, especially because, you know, a lot of us play versus AI. So I find that those are generally more interesting. Um, I don't think I'll be doing too many of them. Like, I might do one more later, um, but I don't think I'll be doing that now. Thank you, Drivian. I appreciate it. He says, hi, Rez. Love your voice. Thank you. Welcome, Bob Jimmy. Uh, Nikesu says, Rez, it's me and my friends have been playing your AI. It's great, thanks, but late game, it really falls behind. Can you do anything about it? Uh, it falls behind late game? How late in the game? I think that's kind of normal, as I didn't want games to go on forever, but it's something I can certainly look into. Glad to hear that you're enjoying the AI, though. Yeah. I had, uh, I had so much fun making Resonance Bot. See, here we can see, though, that he's getting he's getting 3v1, but uh, he's actually doing a good job defending against this, but unfortunately he is basically dead, so... I'll give him, like, a minute of watching more elite skirmishers die. He's doing everything he can in his power. He had a fairly large economy, but right now he's just gonna get bodied, and there's nothing he can really do about it. So, this is an absolute stomp. <laughs> Crap. <laughs> and we'll, uh, we'll hop into the next game relatively soon. Still, though, I hope that this was entertaining at least somewhat, and you enjoyed my commentary, and you learned something a little bit more about how the AIs actually work, and then the next time I do this, if I do do this, then uh, we'll try and set up fairer teams to give a better example of what the new AI is capable of. Uh, in retrospect, I think I overestimated it when I when I set these these teams up, and I did this drawing, and I perhaps I underestimated our, our 
players today that the drawing chose, as they were just extremely proficient. Aha! Welcome, Kigo AoE. And yes, thank you, some flying burrito for the six month resub. Really appreciate it. Uh, Teal did not have a lower score than Pink. There's a bug in HD that where the scores are sometimes listed out of order when you have spectators. When I say that the AI like actually does a really good job managing his economy, like you can really see that with the Teal AI. Um, it just does an excellent job setting that up. It's extremely efficient. Did end up collecting most of the wood that game. Uh, and if we check out the society stats, yeah, 90 villagers again. That's like a very competitive, like human-like boom. That we would expect, while he's, of course, making, like, defensive units as well, so... I am very impressed with how uh, Teal performed, it's just that... There's no way he can deal with his three, three opponents, are you kidding me? What is this, Skynet? No, it's just, it's just an AI. Uh, it's possible, uh, a niche... The thing is, is, though, is that with Resin Spot, like, I'm really just waiting for some significant AI tweaks. Because <laughs> right now there's so many exploits I would like to see... Yeah, a lot of the, the engine-related things that I have no control over fixed uh, as a way to sort of motivate me to get back into things. I'd really just like a like a big old patch. That would be nice. Don't think you underestimated the AI. The crocodile lure was amazing. Thanks, Coconut. <laughs> you think it should be more difficult in the late Imperial Age? That's something I can definitely look into, yeah. While there are some things I can't really tweak, I can certainly tweak the difficulties. So... Since you absolutely butchered my real name, I decided to make a new account. Okay. Oh, well, thank you so much, uh, Kiko AoE. I appreciate it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I, yeah, there's a chance that I, I'd like deathmatch support and other things. I'm always open to your guys' feedback. Um, and yeah, this was a, a short match, but the next one should hopefully be better. And if you guys want to see me set this up with, like, fair settings and teams, let me know. Wiki bit of goody. Not all of my matches can be super close, but I just wanted to post it anyway. So if you enjoyed it, then please show your support. I will post this on YouTube, so uh, you know, take the time to leave it a like and a comment. It, it helps a lot with the channel, and I look forward to bringing you guys more Age of Empires 2 as well as content for other games. I do plan on supporting AOE 2 until the end of the development cycle, so up to a year, but you know, in the meantime, uh, I'm going to be doing a lot of things that aren't Age of Empires 2 uh, in addition to AOE, so... Just be branching out, doing a wide variety of things, not just Hearthstone. There will be a lot of that, but there will also be a lot of other things. Um, you know, maybe I'll play, like, Warcraft 3 campaign or something like that. I'll probably just be hopping around between games and doing, like, a more of a variety thing for my own sanity. That sounds fun. It's a nice way to branch out. Sorry, Maita, what was your question? Um, oh, uh, I do random map scripts, but never try doing bots. Is it harder or easier? Much harder. I would not recommend programming an AI for Age of Empires 2 HD Edition only because it is an incredible amount of work and there are just so many like things that don't work. <laughs> it's really frustrating. <laughs> we, haven't had a we haven't had an update in like eight months. So, yeah. I do kind of want to play a Warcraft 3 campaign at some point though. I was thinking of doing the Night Elf campaign. That could be kind of fun. Oh, uh, yeah, and then uh, later on in the year, you know, I would like to do some maybe some Duelist, Feria, uh, Pokemon Sun and Moon Let's Play. Just a wide variety of stuff. So, I asked if you're, like, only here for Age of Empires 2, that you show your support, and you, you know, hopefully give the other stuff a shot. But if not, you don't have to watch it, and then uh, if you're you know, a big fan of the channel, that hopefully you enjoy the other stuff that I do on the side. Why Hearthstone? Because I find it very fun. But I'll be doing all sorts of stuff. Anyway, we will be right back in uh, just a few minutes with the next match of the live stream, so don't go anywhere. Uh, it's, there's a chance I revisit the AI thing, but I'll also be doing some standard matches as well. So yeah, we'll be right back. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Facebook, and uh, check out everything in the video description below. My live stream schedule on my Twitch page. We'll be right back. <laughs> 